I want everybody quiet, iPads put away, quit rocking in the chairs. We are going to get ready for hopefully what should be a really good quiz month. You guys, this is important. If you don't know this, you're going to struggle for the next three chapters. This is critical. So, you need to be able to, if I draw... If I draw a right triangle, a 30, 60, 90 triangle, and I put, let's say, an X here, you need to be able to tell me what that side of that triangle is. So, here's what you need to memorize. That in a 30, 60, 90 triangle, across from the 30, across from the 30 is what? Uh, yeah. Across from the 60 is root 3, and, then and across L. from two. the 90 is 2. <laughs> that's what you memorize. <laughs> you guys, that those numbers will never change. You need to know those ratios. So the answer to that quiz <coughs> question would have been root 3. Root three. Oh, that's great. So if I give you another one... And I put the X here, then you know that X has to be 2. <coughs> there are also 45, 45, 90 triangles. Does this involve an L? So if no. you are going to do this problem, you have to remember that in a 45, 45, 90, the sides across from the 45s are 1s, and the hypotenuse is root 2. So the answer to this quiz question would have been 1. If that were your quiz question, you would say, well, these are both 1s, this is the... Again, those numbers are never going to change. In a 30, 60, 90, across from the 30 is 1. Okay. Across from the 60 is root 3, and the hypotenuse is 2. Period. Every time. I didn't bring any pencil or paper, but can I take a photo of that? Yes, it's on the green sheet, though. Are you going to take a picture of this? I'm going to erase it. Oh, yes. Now, what else do you have to have memorized for tomorrow? There are six trigonometric functions. And the trigonometric functions are sine, cosine, tangent. Cosine. <laughs> and cotangent. Now, this is critical, important stuff. Sine, cosine, and tangent. Those are the big three. They're the ones you have buttons for on your calculator. <coughs> cosecant, secant, and cotangent are called the reciprocal functions because cosecant is the reciprocal of the sine. Secant is reciprocal of cosine, Ooh, I see. and cotangent, of the tangent. is reciprocal of tangent. I see it. Now, notice that in the pairs, within each pair, sine, cosecant, these are reciprocals. These are reciprocals. These are reciprocals. Within each pair, there is only one co. Sine, cosecant. Cosine, secant, tan, cotan. Only one pair, I'm trying to help you memorize these, only one in each pair is a co. So sine is paired with cosecant. <coughs> Reciprocals. Now the abbreviation for sine is S-I-N. 
the abbreviation for cosine is COS, and the abbreviation for tangent is TAN. Again, you're very familiar with those because they're on your calculator. You have those buttons. <coughs> and abbreviation for cosecant is CSC. CSC, cosecant. Secant is SEC, and cotangent is COT. Within a right triangle, any right triangle, if this is, oh look, let me just label it ABC. If this is the angle that we're talking about, and you are allowed to talk about whatever angle you want, and I, so, so we can talk, I gotta pick one. I'm gonna pick this angle right here. This would be referred to as the opposite side because it's across from the angle. This would be referred to as the adjacent side, so opposite, adjacent. And this, of course, is the hypotenuse regardless. If I were talking about this angle, then this would be the opposite side, right? Opposite means across from. This would be adjacent, and that would still be the hypotenuse. But let's use that setup right there. And suppose I wanted to know what the sine of angle A was. The sine of angle A. Well, I have to know what the definition of the sine is. Anybody memorize it? Exactly. You hopefully at some point in your life got familiar with Chief Sokotoa, Chief of the Trigonometry Tribe. <laughs> so Katoa is a mnemonic device to help us remember oh, so that, that sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. And tangent is opposite over adjacent. Now, Somebody might say, okay, Mrs. Ford, that's great. That <coughs> covers sine, cosine, and tangent. What do you do about these guys? You flip them. If you remember that cosecant is the reciprocal of the sine, and you know that sine is opposite over hypotenuse, then what does cosecant have to be? Hypotenuse over opposite. So let me... A quiz type question. <laughs> so let's say we have this triangle. And we know the sides are 5, 12, and 13. And I say to you, tell me about the tangent of angle B. Now, here's the picture. Here's angle B. <laughs> With regard to <coughs> angle B, this is the opposite side, and this is the adjacent side, and this is the hypotenuse. Now, you got to get that. Okay, so let's back up and make sure everybody's got it. If we're looking at angle B, this is the opposite side. It's across from the angle. Okay. This is the adjacent side. It's next to the angle. This is the hypotenuse period. When it's across from the 90, it's the hypotenuse, always. <coughs> now, what is the tangent? Tangent is opposite over adjacent. So let's look at our picture. Opposite over adjacent would be 5 over 12. And that's the answer to the question. Let's do the secant of angle B. Whoa, 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 wait a minute. Secant. What's the secant 
the reciprocal of? Cosine. Cosine. So secant is reciprocal of cosine. <coughs> What's cosine? Uh, that's adjacent to hypotenuse. Adjacent over hypotenuse. So what will secant be? Hypotenuse over adjacent. So hypotenuse over adjacent, that would be 13 twelfths. Bryce? I need you paying attention. Okay. Bryce? If she bothers you, just ignore her. I'm trying not to let her bother her. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> right, let's use this same picture. Let's use this same picture. Suppose I said to you, what is the cosine of angle A? Now, this is where you have got to pay attention, gang. <coughs> Cosine of angle A. If we're using angle A, then these labels have to change. Because if we're doing angle A, this is the opposite side and this is the adjacent side. Remember, opposite means across from. So if you are doing angle A, Opposite would be over here, across from it. What's cosine? Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So looking at angle A, adjacent over hypotenuse, the answer would be 5 over 13. Okay. With this configuration, your giggling, talking really disrupts the people behind you. So I'm afraid I'm going to have to play hardball here and start writing tensions, which I don't want to do. This is important. We all need to be paying attention. I mean, we haven't seen each other for a few days, but this is important. All right, let me draw a new picture and let's practice another one. of angle B. I know how to start it off. Now, the first thing you have to do is figure out, okay, where your angle is. This is my angle. Now, with regard to that angle, this would be which side? Opposite. Opposite. And this would be adjacent, adjacent. And, would be and this is hypotenuse. So if we're dealing with angle B, this is how we have it labeled. It'll be different if you're dealing with angle A. We're not, we're doing B. So this is opposite. And adjacent and hypotenuse. So what's the answer going to be? Well, you gotta remember what the, the answer is. Three over four. That's tangent opposite is. over adjacent, so three over four. You are exactly right. Now, on your own, some of you came with paper, some of you didn't, hopefully figure it out somehow. I want you to answer these two questions for me on your own. Using this picture, I want to know the cosine of angle A, and I want to know the cotangent of angle A. So using this picture, I want you to tell me the cosine and cotangent of angle A. No talking. There doesn't need to be any talking.